tell us about your clinical observations surrounding pregnancy related SCAD? So in terms of pregnancy related to SCAD, so previously the notion was that pregnancy was the major risk factor for SCAD. But interestingly, with data and accumulation of data and research, what I can tell you that we know about probably um, pregnancy related SCAD and what I mean by that having a pregnancy prior to the presentation of SCAD within 12 months accounts for about a third of the number of people that we see with spontaneous coronary artery dissection. What we know about these patients that they tend to be younger, obviously young, you'd expect younger women to be pregnant. Um, what we see about these women as well is that prior to that majority of them have had no cardiovascular risk factors. Um, in a small proportion, and I wouldn't say more than 20%, we see the history of preeclampsia or eclampsia, as this may not have been the first pregnancy, it could have been the second or the third pregnancy. So it's not always related to the first pregnancy in these patients. Um, unfortunately, the presentation can sometimes be delayed or missed. Part of it, if it happens immediately at postpartum, and if the ECG is not diagnostic, these patients go down the route of being investigated for a clot in the lungs obviously that's more commoner in people who are pregnant or postpartum so sometimes that can lead to a delayed presentation but in the patients that we do see this with because of the heart becoming enlarged during pregnancy they seem to have a slightly larger heart attack as a result of it so the damage to the muscle of the heart tends to be slightly more compared to a SCAD that's not related to a pregnancy. In the cases that are complex, and I've been personally involved in, unfortunately, these patients, some of them have had cardiogenic shock, which has meant that they've ended up in ITU um, and requiring urgent treatment to help their function of the heart. In addition to this, what we tend to see is something called a multi-vessel SCAD. So SCAD is not just in one, air, one artery of the heart. It can affect multiple arteries of the heart at the same time. And this seems to be slightly more common in people in the P-SCAD population um, and in addition to this we tend to see the main artery the left main stem being more than often involved in um, kind of SCAD related to pregnancy so they are slightly different in terms of their age their clinical presentation and this has been quoted in papers that have been published um, in the past showing that the characteristics are slightly different compared to patients who are having SCAD not related to a pregnancy but there isn't an issue a feature in particular that would say these patients are at higher risk because of X, Y, or Z. So apart from preeclampsia being slightly more common, I don't think there is anything else that has, or high blood pressure being more common in pregnancy, there is anything else that's been obviously noted in this group population. And do you have any observations in relation to recurrence in this group? The number of people we know, uh, so in terms of recurrence of patients who've had PSCAD, obviously um, we look at the overall recurrence rate in overall patients. And in, I think it's probably very much similar to patients who've, got, who've had the SCAD outside pregnancy. What I can uh, comment as the honors are several papers that I've published that haven't shown that patients with PSCAD have a higher recurrence of uh, SCAD compared to patients who've had a non-SCAD pregnancy. So um, I don't think the, the recurrence rate is much higher, but also I think the data is very limited because these are a smaller number of people who may have not been in follow-up for long enough to know the outcome of that data. So I think that data should be um, looked at but not generalised as yet because we don't have the data quite accurately there. And what does the high-risk pregnancy clinic involve? So our high risk pregnancy clinic is a clinic that we utilize for ladies who come to my clinic in particular who've had a SCAD who are keen to have a further pregnancy. Um, a lot of the ladies I may see have, may have never had the opportunity to have a family or start a family or are looking to expand their family at this point of their life and are keen to think about how they can do this safely. And what we do in the cardio obstetric high risk pregnancy scan clinic is that we look at patients and their individual risk factors. So we look at what's happened in their previous SCAD. So my job is I look at what's happened in the previous SCAD, how they were present, how they presented, what current cardiac treatments they are on, what's their heart function, 
is there anything else for example do they have high blood pressure do they have an impaired function of the heart are they on medications that would imp would prevent them from becoming pregnant or could actually affect the pregnancy itself and also we look at things like fertility so is this patient going to have issues with the fertility uh, do they need to take fertility treatment if they wanted to become pregnant for example and the obstetric team will help us kind of look at their obstetrics complications so if somebody's had a previous pregnancy and has developed a complication during their pregnancy that's always a very important factor and also kind of plan how their obstetric care will be including midwifery care to the point of delivery and reducing their risk factors so each patient comes in and we give them an individualized risk of what could be potentially the recurrence of spontaneous coronary artery dissection post-pregnancy, but also their risk complication related to the pregnancy and if they have any heart issues that would need to be sorted out or will be issues that we would need to adequately manage uh, during the pregnancy. The idea is we'd hope to see people early on who are thinking about becoming pregnant rather than are pregnant because obviously that has a major factor for for the management of the patient and it gives the patient and their partners and their family the chance to go away take all of this information on board and to go and think about whether this is something they would like to do or not i think we've put about 35 women through this clinic i think most have um um, wanted to become pregnant and have become pregnant successfully without any complications, which is great to hear. I think there are a few patients who turned around and said, this is not something I would like to take on because it's not the right timing for me, or actually the risks may be too high for me to consider. Nothing in life comes without risk, and certainly we can't give accurate risks, but we can suggest this may be the overall risk of having a pregnancy related to SCAD. Um, I'm gonna go on and just talk about risk of spontaneous coronary artery dissection in women who become pregnant. So there is recently been some data, and actually this is data that I will hope to share later on in the year, that um, there has been actually a meta-analysis paper recently that I have reviewed, in addition to a paper by our colleagues in Mayo Clinic, which have shown that there isn't an increased risk of a SCAD after a pregnancy in somebody who has had SCAD. Now, this is probably the first time we've actually seen this information published, given that previous literature has suggested that actually there is an increased risk. I'm glad this literature is out there, and I'm really glad somebody has done a meta-analysis because the idea of meta-analysis, they look at pooled data, so it's not just one study population, it's lots of studies, basically. And the overall risk of a recurrence related to a pregnancy for somebody who's had a previous SCAD doesn't seem to be different to a recurrence of SCAD overall. And we know that there is already a recurrence of SCAD. And again, the recurrence figures that have been reported are less than 10%. So we kind of go back to the original data that we have had from the UK, which is reassuring. Now, the, the limitation is that this is a small group of people. We're not looking at 700, 1,000 people. We're looking at less than 100 people together who've become pregnant post spontaneous coronary artery dissection um, so i think you know it, it's data that should be shared but i think every patient should have their individualized risk factors looked at um, like i said if they're taking medication that has to be looked at if their heart function is not great for a pregnancy that's an important factor so we look at a combination of factor for each individual and give them a risk assessment and if somebody's unfortunately had a very large um, infarct or a heart attack second previous to a previous SCAD and they have a lot of scar tissue and damage to the muscle of the heart, a pregnancy would be high risk as a result of that, not just a recurrence idea of a spontaneous coronary artery dissection. So there are lots of factors that we need to kind of put together and balance before we actually can say, this is your risk. And if you're in the low to moderate, then it's up to the patient to consider what they want to do for themselves. And do you have plans for future research or for some publications? Well, I'm hoping that um, now that we're slightly, I won't say in a dull phase of life, but with COVID slightly being maybe a bit more in control, but let's see what the next few months brings along, that um, the data from our clinic um, that we have collected for the, the patients that I've mentioned, we've put about 35 women through, that we could actually um, put this data together. I mean, what's interesting is that we've had um, a couple of patients from Europe, a few patients who've had SCAD 
related to a previous pregnancy who've gone on to have a further SCAD. So, you know, overall, the instinct is that there would be a high risk, but interestingly, 18 months later, and there's only very few of them, they are well and they've sent me pictures of their new family. So I'm delighted that we've been able to give them that opportunity to support them through this journey that they've had to make through their life. But I think this is interesting data that hopefully if we can put it together over the next few months uh, and into the new year, it would be very informative for our patients. And, and what's your thoughts on the long-term follow-up of those patients? So we know SCAD can occur at any point in your life. So recurrence is not limited to one year. And if you look at the data of people who've had recurrence at one year, two years, three years, the, the percentage, I mean, I think follow-up maximum so far has been up to five to six years or a mean of follow-up is not greater than that period of time because of where research started. So um, as a result of that, I think what we can actually say is that probably the overall risk during that time is less than 10 percent but kind of the incidence rate of a recurrence at the moment in the literature is about three percent basically again that's much lower than having a heart attack or much lower than a recurrence of a heart attack in a normal individual so if we were to compare risk to risk it's definitely much lower but i think what the long-term follow-up would ideally be through lifetime so we could give people accurate data and say we know if you had a SCAD at the age of 30 by the time you're 70 and we suspect after 70 the risk is much lower that we only have very few patients who are of that age group who have had a SCAD that the risks are x y or z or certainly lower than 10 percent what is interesting is i think we always believed that SCAD was just affecting young women and i think recently what I have seen is actually we see SCAD in patients around the age of 60 to 70 as well. Um, and, you know, these patients clearly have a different risk factor profile that, you know, will be phenotyped, I'm sure, as, as we collect more data and understand what is their underlying cause. And how many men with SCAD do you see currently? Is it in line with the, the, the published statistics? So I think my colleagues probably in Leicester see more because they're doing the research for men in particular. Alice, I'm sure, is doing a fantastic job of that. I said, tend to not see very, I, I would say very few men come uh, through um, and certainly much less than women, um, what I could say. I think maybe in the last year I've been referred three to four men. Uh, and I think one of them was actually a misdiagnosis. So I think it's really important as well. If somebody doesn't sit in the history profile or the clinical profile, that it's best to further investigate them because unfortunately it can lead to a misdiagnosis. And that means that patient that we had been referred was misdiagnosed and had to have a different type of treatment completely because it wasn't spontaneous coronary artery dissection. Can you comment on any impact to scab patients in relation to COVID-19? Very interesting question. So COVID-19 has affected um, overall the health of all cardiovascular outcomes. So what I can share with you is that particularly in the London area, because this is data applicable to how we practice, is that we saw very much delayed presentation through the first kind of peak of COVID, we saw um, patients having misdiagnosed or not access to their healthcare like their GPs, patients being afraid of coming to hospital partly because hospitals were riddled with COVID patients and were scared. So I think as a result of it, we saw kind of around July time, much sicker people present to hospital with just heart disease. And I think overall, if I was to extend that, I do worry that we have, we've probably missed a population of patients particularly young women who are healthy and fit and no risk factors who may have not gone to hospitals because they they couldn't access their gp for advice at the time or you know arrival to a and e um, you know they would have been quickly risk factor profiled and if th their pain was a few days out from the initial presentation they may have not had all the kind of the, the testing required at the time to decide if this is potentially a scad I know of a particular case that unfortunately presented to my hospital in May, but she didn't get seen or followed up till August. And by the time we did the CT scan, because we'd missed her initial presentation, it was only in September that we diagnosed this lady had had a SCAD. So I think unfortunately, like all healthcare outcomes, COVID has had an impact 
to um, to everything, but I think to SCAD possibly we may be seeing some delayed presentation. But in addition to that, what's interesting is that I seem to get more referrals recently for patients who've had SCAD. So whether the stress of SCAD or the under treatment of high blood pressure in young healthy women who may have the predisposition to SCAD is leading to an increased presentation is unclear or just the fact that we've got better and more people are able to recognize this is a SCAD and refer it on. So it's difficult to draw which one it is, but certainly there seems to be more increase in presentation of SCAD over the last few weeks um, that I'm seeing in, in our clinic. So have you been able to make any modifications to the clinic? Um, with COVID, I think with all of life, we've had to make some modification. And I think with clinic, uh, gladly, we've actually not stopped the SCAD clinic as such. I think for a few weeks, maybe there was delays because we weren't sure what, what services that were going to run. But with the SCAD clinic, we've moved to a virtual clinic, which means we can all our new referrals or old referrals are followed up with a phone call or a virtual call. And at the moment, we've just recently piloted doing video consultations. So I would be able to do a video consultation, get you to do the maneuvers we need to examine you. I'm hopefully able to share the data with you through the same screen so that you can see what we're talking about. And we've been successful with a few patients with that. So I'm hoping that we could launch that for our ongoing SCAD clinic. In addition, um, the cardio obstetric high, high risk clinic is also a virtual clinic. So, you know, nothing at the moment is delayed if you have, um, you know, if you are referred or you would like to be referred, please feel free that you can access the service. And in, in, a, in an important way, also, I know people are anxious about traveling, anxious about using trains and airplanes or train or, you know, coming into London. So I think this helps our patients be at least seen. We can get your investigations done. Our services still work and it is safe um, at patient pathways at the moment um, for, to kind of ensure that you're not in a COVID area and certainly in a COVID free zone. So in a way, I hope this reassures everybody that we, we have gone virtual and somehow we're managing to get patients through this.